Howdy ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and I'm pretty stoked for doing my uh, first lesson here at Premier Guitar. Uh, I started out my guitar journey in riff land, and when you're in riff land, when you're doing metal and that kind of stuff, you don't really have changes, so to speak. You got riffs and you got grooves, and so it leads you to a key-centered soloing approach, which isn't wrong or good or bad, it's just that's what time it is when you're doing that. Then, when I uh, got into bluegrass, and especially country, and most notably slower country, I uh, started taking a more chord scale approach. Shocker. Started playing changes because there were different chords. Imagine that. Uh, an improviser figuring out how to actually play and say something about the different chords that are changing underneath. Again, <laughs> I spent a long time in riff land. So that really got my ear ready for when I finally fell in love with Jerry Garcia and like the Grateful Dead about a year ago. And I started watching John Mayer's um, kind of transformation from a key-centered blues approach. Now he's always been super melodic, but when you come from a blues background, it's key center, right? It's blues and E. Um, and, uh, and watching him create roadmaps with triads and connecting them with melodies. Uh, that, that, watching him do that and listening to Jerry Garcia for the past year has completely taken me on this chord tone path where I really don't think about scales that much anymore. I really just think about melodies and the notes in the chord, specifically the triad, the root, the third, and the fifth, and more than anything, the third, becoming a third hunter. That's my whole thing right now, and that's what this genre has kind of uh, led me towards. So without further ado, we're gonna do Franklin's Tower and we're gonna do Althea. Franklin's Tower, you got A, A, G, and D. You would be, uh, you would, uh, you'd be wrong to say that this is simply a mixolydian. Of course, it's, it's a one, four, five, and D, so A mixolydian, so A major, and throw some G's in there, and you, you know, right off into the sunset. You can do that, but that's, you'd be missing the forest for the trees. What you really want to hear in that is equal length A, equal length D, and the G is a transition. Right? So you want to think A, D, A mixo, D major, you know, or D Ionian. And that's the trick. Start in one simple spot and then expand. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do A major like this. This is a second inversion triad. So fifth root, major third, E A C sharp. And then you have D here. Notice your A is the same, so that doesn't change. That's a linking note in your melody, because that is the fifth of D. So this is now first inversion, so F sharp, there's your major third, A is your fifth, and D is your root. So I'm gonna play this track, and you're gonna see me make melodies doing one, two, three, Melodies on D, but keeping keeping an ear out, right? Keeping an ear out for when it goes back to the A, and if I'm on a D, slam back into that C sharp. Where's that third, right? And if I'm going the other way around, and I might be up an A, but going down, connecting with that G, and we go to D, where's that third? I'm gonna slam that F sharp. That's how you connect. You find these little, right? You find the little connectors, but you're always thinking, where are my thirds? Where is the melody in here that I can resolve, to which I can resolve? Never end a sentence on a preposition. Michael.
how all I'm doing is I'm thinking a simple one, two, three melody, A major, you know? Same thing on D. But then when I connect through, I'm looking for my chord tone, my third more than any other one, because that connects the two. That connects the two. Be a third hunter. I'll give you another example. Look at this. Bam, 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 bam. Going up to Althea. Now this is B minor to A major to E major, right? Now the trick here is every other time it resolves to the A and then the E. So over the A, where's an A? Or where's a C sharp, right? Where's that third? Over the E, where's the E, where's the B, yeah, but where's the G sharp? Where's that third? That's the trick. It'd be so easy to just say, this is B minor, this is B minor. But what makes, what makes Garcia and Mayer's melodic lines stand out is not the B minorness that they're doing. They're C sharpen when they said C sharp, and they're they're uh, G sharpen when they should G sharp because they know where the changes are, and the thirds more than any other note create chord function. Check it out. Here's another rudimentary track I made. Right. What I'm doing here, I'm choosing to stay in the same spot again. B minor. Again, second inversion. Fifth root minor third. Going down, same shape, or same, same inversion. Second inversion, A major. Fifth root major third. And then you have E major. So your A becomes G sharp. Right? There's the G sharp. And remember, this B, which is the fifth of E, becomes C sharp over A. So every other one you want to try alternating between, you know, right? Or get, Get those little connections down, those little melodic connections going up and down one string, but noticing that here, you know, B, A, E, A, B. So what do you got there? Right, that is A, that's C sharp. And then you can E over here like this, or you can E like that, root and fifth. Let's do it.
I kind of messed up up there. I went to that G, right? Because I, I got caught thinking in scale land. This is new to me. And immediately when I hit that, I said, no, Michael, G sharp, G sharp, G sharp. So that's the key takeaway. Uh, and these jam tracks will be included in this lesson. But it's whenever you start playing over something, when you have enough time to say something, about where the chords land, right? So if you're on a chord for four or five seconds, it behooves you to say something for it, right? You're not in the whole riff world I was talking about. So when you get in, when you start doing that, I want you to try to get in the habit of only thinking about the notes that are in the chords, the important chords, especially the thirds, and what are the connecting notes where you can connect simple melodies based on those triads. So do your closest moves, find them in the same place, but you want to try to connect triads with basic melodies. Get past thinking this song is in the key of B minor, or this is A mixolydian, have a ball, use your ear. I know that these great improvisers did use their ear, but I promise you, you can tell by the way they play uh, especially Jerry's banjo playing, you can tell it is triads being connected with melodies all day off into the sunset. Love you guys.